Hello and welcome back to Overland Trails Adventures. If you're looking for a new camping cooking system um, and you don't quite know what's out there and available to you, what's best, or if you're just wanting to find out more information about the different styles of cooking systems, my wife and I have been cooking out outdoors for over 20 years, camping and such, and um, we want to show you our favorite systems that we've come across over the years. Now I'm going to hand this off to the expert in our camp cooking, my wife Dana. Good morning everyone. As Shannon just mentioned, we have been camping and cooking outdoors for 20 plus years. And as our camping styles have changed, so has our cooking styles. So let's get started on where we got started. All right, so in the beginning of our camping time of life, uh, we would go to state parks, designated campgrounds, stuff like that. And they always had a fire pit with a grate. So what better way to start off cooking is on a campfire. Now, living in town, we don't have a campfire, so this fire pit is going to simulate uh, the campground fire. So you've got real wood. Uh, like I say, most of the campgrounds and everything will have fire pits. Most of them will have grates. Um, some people will cook directly over the grate, but we always use cast iron. And that is probably one of my favorite ways of cooking is over wood, in a cast iron skillet, or Dutch oven making biscuits. But one of the downfalls of that is you've got a lot of soot and everything on your cast iron. So what I would recommend if you choose to cook over an open flame of wood is to have a separate set of cast iron now, when we camp in state parks, known campgrounds and stuff like that, while they will have a fire pit with a grate and everything, I don't always feel comfortable cooking on that grate. However, I sometimes don't want to cook in a cast iron skillet as well. So what we've done is we've picked up this uh, grate from you can get them at Academy, Cabela's, you know, your favorite sports outdoors place. And all this is is a stake that you stake into the ground. It's got the grate and everything on it. That way, if you wanted to cook like a steak or chicken or something directly over the flame instead of in a, a skillet, by having your own grate, it doesn't take up too much space. It does get soot and everything on it, so you want to make sure that you're protecting it from your other gear but you get the flavors and everything directly from the fire, the wood that you use. And uh, to me, that just makes the cooking outdoors experience that much better. Uh, one of the newest ways that we have uh, utilized cooking, still with a campfire, but a little bit different, we, um, we watch Lifestyle Overland and they came up with an idea to start cooking over their propane fire pit. Uh, now it comes from the store just like that and we were able to get a grate to put on it. You get the same uh, effect as cooking over a campfire but it's all on propane because a lot of the places that we travel to may have um, a ban on campfires. Now, uh, you don't have the same issue as with the wood burning fire, with the soot and everything, but it, you do have to uh, make sure that this is completely cooled down before you start packing it up. So as our camping styles have morphed over the years, so has our cooking styles. Uh, while we still love cooking over a campfire, we found uh, it to be just as easy to cook with a Coleman stove. It's, they're very simple. They're somewhat compact. They have wind guards. And you can use two different kinds of uh, propane source. Uh, they have these little one pound, I think is what it's called, uh, propane, as well as you can get a um, connector, a whatever to a five or 10 gallon uh, propane source. So this wind guard has helped us out many times and 
if you were to get a really close look at this, you can see we've really used it a lot. The pros of this is its simplicity. Um, it, you've got two burners. You can cook two different things at a time. Uh, some of the cons are the, uh, it's hard to get the fire regulated. Uh, the knobs you can twist till the cows come home and sometimes the, the flame just won't go down. You also can't use the same size skillets as what you may use on the a fire pit because it's sort of small. So, uh, but you can cook anything on this. Uh, okay, the next uh, form of cooking that we've used, cooking apparatus, is this Blackstone flat grill. Now, if any of you have watched some of our previous episodes of Camp Cooking with Dana, you know I absolutely love this Blackstone. I worked for many years in the restaurant industry and cooking on a flat grill, you just can't beat it. What I really like about this is you can cook multiple things at the same time. You can cook steak, you can cook bacon, eggs. Uh, we went camping a couple of weeks ago with some friends of ours and I had steaks. I had green beans, I had the whole works all going at the same time, mushrooms. It has different zones so you can cook things differently, but you do have to learn where the zones are. Um, the, it uses propane and the regulator, it does go up and down, it, it does um, create warmer zones than others. If once you do, you know exactly where to put things. And although I do love cooking on this, uh, a few cons that I want to point out is it is big, it's bulky. You have to make sure that you have a place to capture the grease trap, the grease in a trap, as well as it does take a little bit longer to cool down and so therefore you can't cook on it and immediately put it up. But it is heavy, it will add to the weight of your equipment and Obviously, you can tell, I absolutely love this one. So again, as our styles have evolved, we were looking for more efficient ways to not only uh, save space, but save time and energy. And that's whenever we found the Jetboil Half Gen. Um, this is an all-encompassing fire source as well as a skillet. It's only one burner, but as you can see, it all packs up together. It has um, these rubber handles, so it stays cool. Um, it's, it's not Teflon coated, but it's nonstick. You can use it on this, or you can also get a connector to use a regular bigger propane. You don't have to use a, a, a lighter or anything. Once you turn it on, you flip this and it automatically ignites for you. It, you are able to regulate it more, so it is a little bit better than the Coleman, so you are able to regulate the heat a little bit better. From here, we found another product also by Jetbull, and it is the Jetbull Genesis. Now, what this is, is a complete cooking system where it has a Dutch oven, it has a skillet and a lid, and you have two burners. It's very compact, as you can see, and it does open up to where you can cook both at the same time. It also has, it has uh, the fuel input right here for both this kind of fuel source as well as the other propane, and it has an output to where if you wanted to, if you needed three burners, you could connect this to the half gen as well. Now this, it does have a um, wind guard, but I found that the wind guard is a little bit on the flimsy side. Whether we're in the Jeep or my husband's truck, uh, we'll use the doors and the pull down um, table tops to, to keep the wind away. Also, just like the half gen, it has the uh, automatic igniter. Once you turn it on, you flip this, flip this. 
independently, so they'll both start. And this does regulate the, uh, the heat a little bit better than any of these. So I also want to show you the more about the uh, pots and pans that comes with it. Uh, the Dutch oven has these coils on the bottom that helps regulate the heat a little bit better. So the, uh, the Dutch oven has a lip uh, with the coils on the side here that has it sit to where it doesn't move around. The lid has a strainer on it. And just like the half gen, the skillet has the rubber handles. We've not experienced this, but we have seen some people that had the, uh, the lid on it and it started melting. Again, we've not experienced that. I've not had any problem. Uh, one of the downfalls of both the half gen and the, the Genesis is the price. It is a little bit more expensive, but you have to think about how often you're going to use it and the quality of this is by far some of the best that we've seen. So one of our other favorite options, not necessarily for cooking full meals and stuff for us, is the uh, Jet Boil Flash and the Jet Boil Sumo. Now, a lot of people will use this, especially whenever they are backpacking. So these are small and convenient, and what we like to use them for is to make our coffee. Um, this particular model cook, boils water in about 90 seconds. This probably two minutes, two and a half minutes. And this will make two 12 ounce cups of coffee. Uh, this will obviously do more. You can also do soups, uh, bowl water for macaroni and cheese and stuff like that. Or, some of the people that we follow will also use these freeze-dried, dehydrated, whatever they're called, uh, meals. Uh, you boil the water, pour it directly in here, let it set for a few minutes. And from what I've been told, I've not personally tried these yet, but from what everyone tells us, these are two of the better products that is out on the market. Some of the pros of this system is how fast, how convenient, and how light it is. Uh, we love using this to make our coffee in. We used to use a percolator, but this is so fast and convenient. Uh, it comes separately, or you can also buy the kit that uh, you can use as a French press for your coffee. Like the, the Dutch oven on the Genesis, it comes with the uh, coils at the bottom and it does snap on to where it doesn't move around. It has an igniter so all you do is you'll turn this on, hit this button and it does regulate very well. One of the down, uh, I shouldn't say downfalls, but one of the cons of this is it is a little bit expensive, but we have, I feel we've really gotten our money's worth out of this. We use this on every camping trip. Uh, even whenever we're back in East Texas at our family land, this is what we use to make coffee. So one of our newer cooking methods is this Timbo Tusk Scottle. It's a lot like a wok as well as the Blackstone where it has a hot region down in the center and the warming regions on the top. Um, it comes just with the scottle itself and the legs. Uh, to buy separately, you can get the table that attaches to one of the legs that has a little rubber gasket. The lid, as well as this grate, is also extra. But I will say that we cooked cinnamon rolls a couple of weekends ago and with the exception of I forgot to spray the uh, grate, it, they turned out perfect. As I mentioned before, it's a lot like a wok where it has this region right here gets the hottest. It's a little bit temperamental on um, being able to regulate the heat that goes right here. So I don't recommend you putting bacon across because then this part of the bacon will get 
cooked a lot more than this part of the bacon. So just remember that. But this part gets very hot, very fast. This part is the warming. Um, if you want to know some really good cooking tips and uh, how to cook on it, I recommend following Marco at Overland X. He cooks on, I think, two or three of them he has right now, and he is a genius. Once you learn the different areas and how to cook various different things on it, I found it's better on cooking things like um, meats and potatoes and, and stuff like that, more stir fryish or fajitas, stuff like that. The fuel sources can be either these little propane containers or you can also get a, uh, the connector to connect it to a five or 10 pound, 20 pound uh, propane tank. The, one of the biggest cons of this is the price. As I mentioned before, the, uh, you only get the Scottle and it's in excess of $300. If you want the lid, the grate and the table, you're gonna add a couple of hundred bucks to it as well. I've, and you also get a, um, a cookbook that comes with it whenever you buy the whole package. It does come with a carrying case, whether you just get the Scottle or all the accessories, it does come in a case. One of the other cons, and I don't know if you really wanna call this a con, but like the Blackstone, it is very heavy. It um, is not very compact and it does weigh a lot. So you just have to factor that in with uh, how you pack your gear and everything. If you've been watching our channel for any length of time at all, you know that my husband has a Toyota Tundra with an Alu cab camper on the back. Um, and because of that, we've been looking for a means of cooking inside in case inclement weather, because while we love all of our propane um, cooking apparatuses, it's not necessarily the safest thing to be cooking with fire in an enclosed area. So what we've just recently found is this induction cooker. Um, it is, we haven't even opened it. As you can see, it's still in the box. It comes with a nine inch ceramic nonstick fry pan. And I'm really excited to break this open and uh, see what all it can do for us. Um, we'll use this whenever we're out somewhere, if it's raining, if it's cold, because with his setup, we can cook and camp year round. One of the things you do have to consider, because this is electrical, you do need to make sure that you have enough power to support it. So one of the reasons we want to try this is because it is a cool to the touch style of burner. A induction cooking system uses a coil inside that reacts with the metal pan uh, to create the heat. Uh, once you remove the metal pan, the surface itself is not hot. Um, it does stay a little bit warm, but the heat is generated by the contact with the metal. So that's why it is uh, favorable in many situations and a lot of the pros to it is it doesn't generate you know smoke or you know um, fumes or anything like that so it's going to be really good for us to try to cook with this inside i am testing uh are going to be testing just to make sure we have enough power to support it uh, because it does require a lot of uh, electricity to run it uh, at, on the three different wattage settings you can get you have to have at least 600 900 or 1300 watts uh, continuous to be able to run it. So we bought a 2000 watt inverter and going to run that off of our two 100 watt lithium batteries. So we hope it'll be a good option for us. And this is why I keep him around. So again, if you have any questions, please uh, leave comments below. If you like uh, the information, like the video. And if you'd like to see more information like this, subscribe to the channel so you can keep track of where we're going, what we're doing, what new systems we're trying. You know, all this talk of Cooking items makes me hungry. Yeah, definitely. We haven't had breakfast yet. So we're going to get cooking, uh, maybe some bacon eggs, and we'll see y'all down the trails.